So here's a puzzle for you. What do you consider proper kit when you're riding around on a retro 90s mountain bike? I know it's kind of a vain question to ask, but I thought about it for a second, and road bibs just don't seem right, and full mountain bike kit seems wrong too. So the only logical conclusion that I could come up with was basically that proper retro 90s kit is anything but proper kit. So today's ride is basically a t-shirt and regular shorts with no chamois kind of ride. Feels kind of good, to be honest. Like somehow got lower expectations, which may leave room for more fun. So I'm on a slightly modified Fullerton loop this morning and I'm super excited to try out the new mullet drivetrain on the 1990 Specialized Hard Rock. Now if you remember when I first built up this bike, I did it up single speed to try and be cool and like classy, but I realized afterwards that I'm just not strong enough to ride single speed on anything other than basically flat paved roads, which basically meant that this bike kind of just sat around and only brought it out on mellow bike days with the kiddos. So just yesterday I converted to a Shimano Dior M5100 series 11 speed drivetrain with a generic Sunshine 11 to 52 tooth cassette. That's right, Sunshine, not Sun Race. And I left the cranks and chain ring and it's got a single 42 tooth chain ring up front mounted to the outside of the spider because it just looks better that way. But that means that the chain line is pretty awful and it's not a narrow wide chain ring. So I have no idea how it's going to perform on the chunkier descents. If I end up dropping my chain every 30 seconds, I may need to invest in a narrow wide chain ring and mount it to the inside of the crank spider like a sensible human being. All right, in other news, I put the Velo Orange stem back on, which is super classy. I also put on the Richie Classic Coyote Bars, and I ditched the brown grips in the saddle for a more sensible combination with a better fit and feel. I'm also super excited to be rolling on these brand new Schwalbe Billy Bonkers tires that I snagged from Draco Bikes in Florida of all places. I've been hunting these tires down for a long time now, so I'm excited to finally try out a pair. I'm calling these the mythical Billy Bonkers just because they've been so hard to find. And so far they're noticeably more supple than the Maxxis DTH tires I was running before. The casings on these Schwalbe's are a lot thinner and a lot more supple. Uh, which is great for right feel. I have no idea how they're going to stand up for punctures. I guess only time will tell. I have to say that this 90s retro mod, resto mod thing, whatever you want to call it, it's looking pretty... What's the word I'm looking for? Fly? <laughs> nah, it's looking really awesome though. I'm really happy with how it came out. Oh! <laughs> Oh, this bike is so much fun. It's weird because I kind of split my time between, you know, drop bar road and gravel bikes and also mountain bikes. And so this, it's got flat bars and it's kind of like a mountain bike. Oof. But by today's standards, it is not a mountain bike. <laughs> the problem is I'm trying to ride it like it is a modern mountain bike and I'm being constantly reminded of what the limitations of this kind of bike are. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> All right, well, gradually learning the limitations of a 32 year old bike. Everything's good. It's got a little sandy right there. See that? Got some massive air off that little step up right there. I got kind of washed out on the landing. It was like eight inches of air. Little floaty single track section. Oh no! Alright. Here we go, single track. And we should go single track. Whoa! Kinda tight. Oh. oh my god, I love that low gear climb out of anything. Alright, I gotta do some 360 stuff. Mm -hmm. 
being responsible now. <laughs> nice. Now, usually on video rides, I have a GoPro dangling from the chesty strap and the Insta360 One X2 and the selfie stick stashed in like a bib pocket, along with some extra batteries and like a small tripod. But with the awesome basket bag from Outer Shell, I've got plenty of space for all that stuff. Nice. I'm right on like a jump line right here. So let's see what we do have in here. The Insta360 One X2. Got a spare tube, asthma inhaler, package that I need to send out, tools, <laughs> box end because these are bolt-on axles. Got a wallet, keys, zip ties, spare battery. I thought I had some stickers. I think I them all in. That is it. This bag is freaking awesome. Thanks Kyle and Jim over at Outer Shell. Oh, they make awesome stuff. So like I said, this is a modified Fullerton Loop. This is the Brea Dam right here. We're gonna cut a little short so I can hit the mailbox and mail out these future shock spacers. Only one order today. Lately, it's been a few per day, which is awesome because clearly people need them. Not as many sticker orders lately though. Yeah, I know my sticker designs aren't that great. Plus there's only two. Cutting through the hospital. Yeah, this is where I spent the night after I crashed. That's old news though. Everything's good now. Oh yeah, plenty of topping. This might be the first time I'm in the highest gear. What that really means is I could probably go down on my chain ring, go down to like a 38, climb anything. There we go. All right, I'll jump back on the trail right here. This is where I fell and had to walk myself to a hospital. It's the only benefit of coming back to a site where you've crashed in the past, if you've recovered, that is. It's just that it kind of gives you some perspective. You know, things got pretty bad for a while there. Could have been a lot worse. So it's kind of nice to come back and reflect on that. You know what I mean? All right, all right. All right, so that was it for the fluke, sort of. A couple of detours, a couple of minor delays. Still, for the most part, it was a Fullerton loop. And no problems at all, actually, with the new Shimano Dior 11 speed. This shift's really awesome for the price point. The shift action is really light, it's easy to set up. And no drop chains. I think probably the clutch derailleur helped out. Uh, wasn't riding crazy. And on the uphills, even though the chain light was awful, I never dropped the chain. But it's fun. That's the most important part, right? Oof. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this vlog. Is that what this was, a vlog? I basically just wanted to show you all the new setup on the Hard Rock and do, you know, do a video about a 90s mullet. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Hit the like button if you liked the video. I'll see you next time.